Hi, everyone. My name is Chandrasa Sahiti. I just completed my Bachelor of Science with honors in neuroscience, and um, I completed science in the media in the winter semester of 2020. My name is Julie Lewandowski, and I'm entering my third year at Dalhousie University studying a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Chemistry. Hello there. I'm Josh Neufeld, and right now I'm going into my third year in the Honors Journalism program at King's. Science in the media has a lot of different themes that it covers, as it does go over history spanning from the Stone Age all the way to the modern digital era. But on the surface, the course looks at topics in general related to three main categories. The science of the media, science in the media, and science through the media. We went from the beginning of time, looking at the earliest forms of writing, cuneiform, Chinese script, you know, not only how they made the paper and the science behind that, which I think is just personally really interesting and worth knowing, to sort of transition to the modern age. The internet and social media and just impacts that those can have on individuals' cognition as well as their social interaction. You have to have a good idea of what's going on in the world and not only how the world works, but why it works the way it does. We also looked at the scientist as icon, so we looked at different famous scientists in the past. Um, you might think of, you know, Isaac Newton, which is Dr. Snowbone's favorite, and Albert Einstein. So all these people that were not only scientists and respected in their fields, but also had, um, you know, this great public image. Um, so it, it was interesting to learn about the absolute power that some of these scientists wielded not only in their fields, but over the public. Another really core idea of the course comes from Neil Postman in his book Technopology, where he essentially makes the point that when you introduce a new technology into a society, the society changes in its entirety, and it's no longer the same society that it was before that technology. And of course, a really big part of the coursework is actually looking at the different technologies. We actually even had a field trip during our unit on the printing press where we toured the archives of the King's Library, and we got to see lots of really interesting manuscripts, including various illuminated texts. We talked about kind of the dangers of the whole Silicon Valley model that we have going at the moment. We've moved away from sort of this pure media as a communication form to, you know, how can we maximize our profits from it? And I think that drew some really interesting ethical quandaries and questions about the whole, you know, shape of media we have in the current day and whether, you know, we really have media for the sake of media. I found that our class was made up of a really good blend of humanities students and STEM students who could each bring their own unique experiences and their unique perspective from their field to discussion. And I think that that alone made the class a really unique and worthwhile experience. I actually got to write a paper on video games, which is something I never thought I'd find myself saying. I personally thought that was really cool because I am a huge lover of gaming and uh, esports as a whole. The paper itself focused on a sort of discussion of how we've gone from a place where, you know, in the 80s and 90s we were creating our first platform games, single player, offline, like Donkey Kong, the Mario, to the stuff now where it's like uh, your first person shooters where you can talk to people on the other side of the screen, your sports games where you could be playing with a guy from Brazil or somewhere else across the world. So I think this is a really up and coming area of journalism. I'm getting an opportunity to do something that I feel a lot of people in other journalism programs wouldn't necessarily get to do. I chose to look into vaccine misinformation um, and how that is perpetuated through the media today. So I was looking at mostly through social media. I got to look into a lot of really interesting topics like um, trolling over Twitter and Facebook, the role that certain scientists, quote unquote, have played and, you know, stoking the fires of vaccine misinformation, and then how that all has come together with various societal factors um, to reduce vaccination rates all over the world and um, to lead to worse health outcomes for kids and adults alike. I've always really been interested in genetics, so I decided to research the eugenics movement in North America in the first half of the 20th century. And I focused on looking mainly at how it was represented in the media, and essentially tried to answer the question of how it was able to gain as much popularity as it did, given that it had no scientific backing. Uh, having an understanding of how the media, and I mean, I guess that's what journalism is, right? It's media. How it is, how it works, and how it came to be, and why it works the way it does, I think that's integral. This course, if nothing else, is best at making you ask questions. Why are we seeing the news we are, right? How is this important? Why is society deigned for us to see it this way? In the industry, but asking questions, 
you should at least ask questions about your own industry. I would definitely recommend this course to any future researchers and anyone in technology-related fields. And I would definitely also recommend it to just anyone who wants to think more deeply about their field and improve their communication skills. I am continuing on to complete my degree in medicine at Dalhousie in the fall. And I feel like this course has really given me um, a lot of valuable information in terms of what the role of the scientist has been and is now, um, and also how to best communicate science to the public um, and to my patients. It's also given me a great sense of um, the immense power that scientists hold in society. And it's given me great respect for that as well, uh, because it's not something to be wielded lightly.